gentlemen, we are back. We are live. We are with Daisy. We are on Digital Summer and Summit 2021. Today's conversation is about DeFi and NFT. And this is the second panel with so many distinguished people and so many distinguished persons and impressive of them. Uh, on this on this panel discussion, but first of all, I want to invite them on stage. Here we are with Jeremy Roma, with Alex Melnichuk, with Felix Mango, with Joel Dax, and today's topic is going to be about what are the most significant changes that we can expect to see in next era of real world of blockchain. I would like to start my conversation with Joel, Joel Dads. We know each other, but people don't know you personally. Introduce yourself in a brief words and what your ex expectation of this market. Sure, yeah, I'm a fellow at MIT. I work on the research of sort of smart city da data architecture and the e evolution of system design, but I was involved in Ethereum sort of at day one. I started MetaMask at, at DevCon Zero. Um, and I've been, you know, involved in other projects like Swarm Fund, which I co-founded, which is the first sort of real asset tokenization platform dating back to the kind of 2014 era. And I think just to lead into kind of expectations, I mean, I think we're, so we've been at the tipping point for a while and it's a bit to know, hard to know exactly when it will come in, but the actual onboarding of, you know, real world assets uh, to be managed by blockchain ledger systems and blockchain governance systems you know, I think it's something that people have seen coming for a long time. And we're actually at an amazing moment where within the last 24 hours, the property platform did the first real estate NFT, um, other things are happening. So I think we're going to see that really start to pick up in the next year. Um, and I couldn't be more excited. Thank you, Joel. Felix Magel with us. Your turn. Hi, thanks for having me. I uh, just had the pleasure to talk already. Pleasure to be here with you guys and, and discuss this hot topic. Felix is my name, uh, co-founder of Dash Next. Basically, we are running all the operations for Dash here in Asia, business development, partnerships, marketing, essentially driving the dream of uh, having crypto everywhere and being able to pay everywhere with crypto. And of course, now lots of stuff happening in DeFi. We with Dash want to be there, building bridges, building assets, uh, cooperating with lots of teams right now, so very happy you know, to see all that. My perspective is that DeFi or, or DeFi has changed a lot in the blockchain space. Suddenly we see a lot of products coming out. It's completely different than 2017 when it was all just uh, dreams. Now it's there, stuff is happening. I honestly cannot keep up. I, uh, I'm hesitant to do predictions in DeFi because next month, you know, what, what do I know what's going to happen and what's going to be out already. There's a lot of stuff happening the way I see it. There's especially the first step is to bring all the financial products we know now into a decentralized space. And again, that's happening in a ridiculous speed right now. So happy to be here and discuss more. Thank you, Felix. Jeremy, your turn. Awesome, man. Well, just wow. Incredible to be here with both of you guys, first of all, Felix and Joel and pioneers of this, uh, this whole industry and space. So Thank you guys for everything you've done to lay such incredible groundwork. And, um, you know, none of this would be here today if it wasn't for, you know, platforms like uh, like MetaMask, you guys changed the game. And, uh, you know, the, the OGs of the world like Dash. And so uh, it's an honor to be here with you guys. Um, I, I come from a, uh, a traditional business background, uh, have been in the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, space for the last 20 years, and uh, really just excited about uh, what the worlds that are opening up right now. I think that there's a huge bridge, a moment of bridging happening where, um, you know, great leaders and innovators in the business world uh, are locking arms with great technology developers and uh, creating and, and solving problems that, that, that are in the world today. I just, you know, as I said earlier today, when, when, when Alex and I spoke, I just believe that uh, without transparency, you have control and manipulation. And we've seen so many systems in our world today uh, that uh, deprive people of the facts, right? And uh, we used to say that, you know, character is who you are when nobody's looking, but blockchain has really changed the game because uh, character is who you are when everybody is looking. And uh, it's, a, it, it's a beautiful opportunity, I think, for a whole nother level of uh, business and, and leadership uh, whether it's socially or economically, uh, we, you know, just really, really pumped about the future of, of what we're all in front of right now. 
Alex, yes, your turn. Hey, uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really honored and nervous due to this power presence. Um, so I'm tech lead with the Daisy guys during Daisy Launchpad. I also have a small development company called Fragma that's loaded with the projects right now due to DeFi boom. Um, when it comes to, it's an interesting question, like what shall we expect? And I perhaps say something like a huge shift because we have a lot of competitors coming up for the big ETH guy. Like uh, everyone's trying to chew at it with the uh, layer ones, layer twos, uh, Solanas, uh, Cardanos, and it's uh, getting hot, getting interesting. You know, guys, in 2016, when Ethereum comes up, no one even knows that that kind of ICO market can boom in 2017, crash it down, I don't know, do our lovely Bitcoin, something happening, oh, I don't know, with the wells. But nowadays, looks like something like IDOs, it's decentralized or the digital one, I don't know, real, just up to you. But what I see and what I hear, so many launchpad coming out, so many platforms, so many blockchains coming out. And it looks like this market is not growing, it's exposing, it's really get the bank market. What do you think about it? IDO has the future or is it should be something already happened? ICO done, I'll, I'll IDO pass. I would like to see, to, 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 to hear Jeremy, he's ready to explain to us. Well, I, you know, I think part of, and I think we should never lose sight of this, that part of the fascination of the entire energy around this decentralized movement is we don't get to control what it's going to be. Uh, we, we, get to, uh, we get to embrace it and be a part of it, right? Like it really uh, continues to take on a life of its own. And I, it's, for me, that's the most fascinating part is, is this organic evolution. It's you know, we don't know what it is yet, right? And so um, there's certainly, you know, some major shifts that that are taking place. I think that, you know, one thing we're going to see in the space as people have become more and more uh, educated, as transparency continues to be accessible, is we're going to see solid projects, less and less and less of the shit projects, and more and more solid technologies. I think we're going to see less of the overnight success stories, and it's going to be a lot more about putting your roots uh, into the technology and into the, the uh, emerging platforms and market space long term. And I think we're going to see a big shift happening this year in, in that way. We're going to really see who, uh, who's got the roots in the future of this space. And I think it's going to be less about uh, quantity as far as platforms uh, and, and more about quality. And then we're going to see a real movement, I think, of projects. I think that now that we're laying some solid foundations of platforms, I think we're going to really see the evolution of, of, of projects on those platforms. The, the high rise buildings have been built, are being built. And now the, it's time for the office spaces to be uh, leased out by very innovative projects. Joel, you know, I have seen your presentation very carefully and you have so huge research of market. I think you have to say us where is the real what's the next step where we are going as industry well you know we've seen a lot of institutional DeFi projects be built over the last couple of years and i think that you know both that and if you look at just entertainment industry for example you know there's um once you start being able to look at revenue streams attached to different art pieces different audio visual things the way you know, some of the stuff works right now with licensing, but you can start to create financial instruments on top of that, whether it's derivatives markets or, you know, other things like that. You're really starting to, to really see many traditional industry sectors really become, you know, much more complex, but also kind of fruitful and then empowering the kind of creators and everything else. So I think there's just going to be a massive amount of wealth generation um, around these topics as the, as the tooling comes in and as the institutional onboarding um, ramps up. Thank you, Joel. Uh, Felix, I feel that everyone looks for money, but no one get engaged in digital one. I don't know what's happened. Everyone looks for that. All of them say that, you know, looks at this market. This is digital one. This is new. Bit. No, no, no. We get excited. Just give us a one click where to click to do all our lives happen. 
looks like this world never be happened, but what's your field? Where do we go? Interesting that you say that. I mean, I it really depends where you are. This is one thing, especially when it comes to money and payment and the feeling for it. I mean, if you're here in Asia, you're most likely very used to pay with QR codes everywhere you go. If you're in Europe, you or especially in Germany, you will use cash. If you're in the States, probably you will use cards. So it's really a different thing. But what I what I see now is more integrated solution. Also, I'm not only on the consumer side, but also on the payment side, on the services side. It's it's we have we see more and more like uh, POS systems where basically everything is integrated and it's just a matter of a click if you want to accept the WeChat payment, a Dash payment, a Visa card payment or whatever, and it's like kind of an integrated terminal. So, I mean, that's the thing of making it happen. The other side is, of course, the users. I mean, the thing with crypto users and shame on you, shame on you. Every time, you know, crypto is too high, you don't want to spend it. And every time crypto is too low, you don't like to spend it. So <laughs> I guess that has to change. And the way that also changes is everybody's earning crypto. Then, of course, you have to spend it because you have to survive from it. So this is one good thing I, I, I see happening right now in the space. And you know, this is beyond all the financial products and beyond all this, this APR hunting stuff, which then even comes to another level. And my feeling is right now more and more people understand it. And even in, especially in that market that kind of does not give you yield anywhere in, in traditional financial products, more and more people are coming over and seeing it and, and see what's happening. And we discussed it quickly before. There's you know easy ways to do it, and there's more sophisticated, really crazy stuff with you know leveraged yield farming and and all these crazy things we are we are seeing coming out. Thank you, Alex. I'm sure you have something to add because all of the people around are trying to find that significant changes, but looks like there are so many that you have to point out just one or two to for the first jumping in to understand what's happening. Alex. Okay, well, first I wanted to uh, kind of disagree with Felix. I'm no way spend, spending my uh, valuable crypto. We're all, uh, we're all have, having these diamond hands here. So no, you won't see, you won't get it from me. Um, <laughs> uh, when it comes uh, when it comes to major changes, um, there's a lot. First, we're seeing corporations like we're seeing projects like was it baseline protocol versus with Ersten Young and Microsoft. Like, can you imagine this thing? Even this sentence. Uh, uh, crypto, Ethereum, uh, Microsoft, first and Young uh, being in one sentence like in 2017. That's the one of the hugest changes. Second, we're seeing people stopping playing with the perhaps usual solidity stuff. They becoming more confident with offloading parts of the work on the Oracle side server on uh, more uh, computation heavy blockchains. We're seeing that across multiple projects, like when Jorn Finance and Mr. Andre Cronier does uh, offloads, you're, you're kind of laugh, like, whoa, that's, um, that's uh, strong. Okay, cool. Joel, I would like to, you know, to direct my next question to you. You are as I don't know, you are from corporate world, I know, because I'm coming to crypto from the corporate world. I'm working a little bit more from Hewlett Packard Enterprise for a little bit Microsoft. But now I would like to know, does that corporates, which are clearly C and they are really creates application for all that application industry. I'm talking about Apple, about Microsoft, about Hewlett Packard, about IBM as well. They are fully engaged in this industry. and. We are also so many times worse for them. What's about their perspective up to you? What do they expect of this market and what kind of preferable things they are going to spread to the huge communities, to the governments, to the corporates? I think their perspective is also so thankful and so valuable for us. Yeah, I mean, there's two sides of corporates, you know, so in the early phase of adoption, everyone wanted to have private blockchains and basically yeah. just something you control. Um, you know, whether through consortium or whatever else. And given that the original idea of blockchains was to be something that was not sensible, not controllable, it was a little bit, basically it made no sense. Um, and uh, most of those projects have died off kind of slowly and painfully um, as a result. But at some level, you know, corporations are really just about making money. So they'll do whatever is good for their bottom line. 
And so, you know, like I was saying with the entertainment industry, you know, when we see this kind of flow start to happen through the NFT world and the kind of automation and additional financial assets, I mean, everyone's going to adopt it, you know, who wants to be competitive in this new world. And they aren't necessarily going to have, you know, a choice either because it's, it's going to be their bottom line. So I think we're just going to see maybe not them a little bit less of corporates mm -hmm. like building their own blockchains, which, you know, like I said, was pointless, but a lot more about them building significant, you know, solutions on top of an existing blockchain infrastructure. Okay, let's talk a little bit about real world looks like new DeFi market is the same story or is the same models which are somehow digitalized or tokenized and bringing to view the new market where there is no intermediaries but the real governor is the code. What do you think about that? Is it reliable model for the humanity that code should be the judge our relationship between each other. Your as coder should know about that and who's auditors. Joe, yes, is that that question is to you because you are on the on the beginning when MetaMask comes up, when Ethereum comes up, and that question it should be up in uh, your minds as the developers. Yeah, I mean, there's there's always a bit of a trade off between you know speed of development and security, and so. I think you know, just in general, I, I'm a fan of, you know, moving fast and breaking things and, and building things that are, you know, test subjects for a particular area. Um, but it takes a while to get the system dynamics right it, it, anyways. And, you know, obviously the blockchain world has a lot of hype cycles. So the DAO, you know, back in the day was a huge hype thing around a particular business model. No one's actually really rebuilt that business model. So it's kind of interesting, but you know, maybe it worked, maybe it doesn't. And then you know, being able to now, I mean, the great thing about this space as it's evolved is that there's, you know, um, you know, hundreds of, you know, smart contract auditing capabilities. I work a lot with Hacken, um, you know, which has a very good reputation in the space. And, um, you know, there, there's just a lot of possibilities basically for people to build stuff that is, you know, secure kind of from the get go. Um, but yeah, the, the things I mentioned before, the kind of auditability, doing things open source, you know, basically giving bug bounties. I think there are four parts of any um, development cycle at this point for any significant scale project. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. I would like to hear you, you know, hacking also from the Ukraine. You get proud of this country, say that so many interesting developers coming from there. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, well, it was actually hacking uh, that introduced us to Alex uh, 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 last year. So uh, that was where that connection was made. We 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 told him exactly what we we're looking, who we we're looking for, and he said, "I know, I know the person." So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of respect for that. But no, I, I do. I, I think that I think that we're going to see. I don't think it's one or the other, but I think we're going to see definitely a hybrid. I mean, let's you know, let's be honest about the conversation. Uh, we don't want. Uh, I don't think the mission of decentralized economics is. Um, a, 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 for lack of better words, a hippie world of just, you know, everyday people making the big decisions. Uh, there's, there's value. There's a reason why the average person is not making big decisions around companies. And there needs to be core groups of leaders and think tanks and collective genius that are innovating and, 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 and making certain decisions. I really think that, that it's the transparency that brings those two worlds together. And, uh, it, it's not. It's not that the masses want to control projects. It's that uh, mass. The the masses want to have transparency around those. And I believe that the masses are willing to trust code when there's full transparency and when there's full transparency in the teams behind it. I, I'm in love with what DeFi is all is getting ready to do in this world today because I think because there's been this lack of transparency in traditional finance. Uh, it's the corporations that have kept the lion's share. Uh, passing the crumbs along to the people, right? We can go as basic as a savings account with a 1% a year interest uh, while banks are, are, are using massive leverage on the back end against that money. And, you know, now being able to take any ecosystem that has profits and be able to pass rewards and pass that onto the community, I think it's brilliant. I think it's absolutely the future of, I think any, not just financial ecosystems, but any ecosystem that creates profits if it's supported by a community in a decentralized way and those profits go from, you know, you know, we're, we're working on a project right now with a decentralized app store, for example, it's going to be something that we'll be, we'll be doing through our launch pad. And I love the idea that the 30% that Apple gets, the 30% that Google gets, the concept of creating a decentralized 
uh, uh, operating system, an app store on the blockchain, and the users get to participate in that 30% uh, yield, right? And, and there's so many different scenarios where this can be applied. You know, the online marketplace and the list just goes on and on. Anytime you have an ecosystem, once you offer transparency to the community, then you almost have this commitment that says, what are you worth as a community, as a member, as a user of this app or this platform, whatever, what are you worth to us? And it's no longer 1% a year, right? And, and I think that's just a disruptive entry into the corporate world, and it's a big shift for them. The good thing is that the corporate world has now realized that transparency and decentralization doesn't destroy you. And I think there's a big fear in the beginning that they would lose their identity, they would lose, you know, whatever. And the, and the truth is they can multiply their energy in the market uh, by incorporating decentralization, even, even if it's in a hybrid way, right? I, I don't expect major corporations will become fully decentralized, but implementing elements of decentralization where it touches the people, this is going to be big. You know, guys, what I feel this year, previous one, or decentralization looks like driving to the smart people. I don't know how it like. I mean, no one knows how it works. No one, believe me. But everyone talking about that. What do you feel? Decentralization is the key for our communication or relationship for our relationship. Yeah, or is the somehow the opposite of centralization? We get so tired. That's why we are trying to jump to an, a, another space. Uh, Felix, uh, what's your thought about that? Well, that's a great question, and, and Jeremy actually just put it very, very beautifully. You know, it's about it's about it's about products. It's about uh, it's about people. Maybe I, I, if you allow me, let me allow, elaborate a little bit on on the people part because at the end of the day, you know, we are talking about all autonomous systems and everything is decentralized. And and you know, somewhere there's a, this magic internet machine called called Ethereum or called whatever other blockchain that is you know magically making everything happen. That's not the case. At the end of the day, there's a lot of people involved. And even if you look into the details and the nitty gritty of these of all these DeFi protocols, there is a lot of work to be done and continuously work to be to be done. Just take, you know, a yield maximizer, for example, you know, that's you could describe it as a machine that is pooling money to to maximize yield for all its users. But you know, this is a kind of a living organism and people have to change it, you know, pools die, pools, new pools come up. So you know there, there has to be stuff is to be done. And that's that doesn't only go for the tech. But it goes for every part of the business you run, right? So it's not it's not only about cool products. It's it's being able to execute on cool products and really in a in an operational way. And then lastly, to get people excited, which is you know, which also doesn't come just because the tech is beautiful. But let's be honest, you know, there's a lot of noise out there right now. So you uh, also have to make good marketing. And you know, that said, I mean, it's it's. It's just not enough to say decentralization, decentralization. It's really about you know, the, the specific products, companies, value streams, and profit sharing models. And I think that's something that is really taking off that people come up with with business models that just make more sense because you incentivize other people to, to have a share on it. You know, take Uniswap where people get fees. It just makes sense. So you know, there's, there's uh, such and such products, and some of them just make a lot of sense. Sure. Alex, what do you feel? Looks like uh, community decentralization trying to bring us to do something, but to be frank, just few people really creating and doing something valuable on this earth. And as programmer, you are understanding that this new world, this blockchain industry arises by the hands of developers, and they are in my perspective, should be responsible for their doings. That's why Oracle arise, that's why auditors so many. What do you feel? It should be, be done by community or should be done by a com, I don't know, com, 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 no, not competitors, the, the people which are get knowledge about that very few. Um, I think it's about uh, working together. Right. Usually when developer blindly does something, man, it may end up with something amazing and cool. Right. Um, sometimes it's just a cool thing that no one needs really. Right. So it's about just 
I want to join the thoughts about hippie being together that uh, Jeremy mentioned. Uh, it, it really is about being together. It really is about sharing uh, idea. Like you buy into idea. Um, every programmer can do PHP website if they want to. But you do this specific thing because you believe in it. Right. And you believe in the same uh, transparency as uh, each and every of us. Right. Because uh, we all deep in our minds and think like, hey, uh, five years from now, banks uh, have no choice but to ad adapt this uh, transparency as a competitive advantage, for example. That might be the world we live in. And that's what we're all strive to build and we're going to build it. Sure, absolutely. Guys, you know, we have just, I don't know, seven or eight minutes left, but I would like to hear from you the message to the community. Maybe you have to, 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 to say something for the people. There are so many people who are watching for us now, and you are, as influencers, have the chance and voice to be heard. Jeremy, maybe we can start from you. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, we have a responsibility. Uh, any of us who believe in the blockchain space, uh, we have a responsibility to the world around us and uh, to educate, to uh, uh, promote, to uh, uh, participate. And so my message to, you know, first of all, to every one of you that are on attending this event, first of all, congratulations uh, and thank you because uh, it's, it's, it's because of the people and it's because of the community and it's because of so many voices and and contributors around the world to participation in this space uh, that it continues to grow and it continues to expand. And I, I think we all agree that uh, we're in the infancy stages still uh, uh, in the early stages of evolution of, 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 of decentralization. And the, the tipping point, the word was mentioned earlier, and, and that's going to be something that we witness uh, in the very near future. And it's because of the people, because of the community uh, engagement uh, around everything, everything blockchain. So I want to say to the community, first of all, thank you, uh, every listener, thank you. And we've got a big job ahead of us. And uh, uh, it's, it's going to be exciting to see uh, digital currency, to see blockchain really take its place in the real world, in the mainstream world. Uh, because at the end of the day, we, we don't just want a big giant experiment. Uh, at the end of the day, what we want is uh, many experiments that produce results that make the world a better place, that make systems better, that make governments better, that make social uh, uh, realities better, that make economics better. And I think that's where we're coming from. We're coming from the great experience into the great reality. And that's going to be the next move of, uh, of digital currency. Thank you. Joel, your message to our community, to our viewers. I thought Jeremy said it extremely well. You know, it's a it's a global community that's being built, and what we built, you know, is really you know for the world. And I think there's a lot of things that have not been solved yet. You know, as I was talking about, I'm extremely extremely excited about empowering creators for the purpose behind Art Wallet and really streamlining the process so that fans can enjoy, but also support the people who created the content. Um, in the most, you know, streamlined and abundant way possible. And we've seen a huge flourishing of sort of NFT art in certain areas, but I think there's so much more to be built and expanded upon, and there's room for roles in many different areas. So there's, you know, obviously the engineers, and then there's the people who are curating, and there's the people who are recruiting, and there's people who are spreading the message, and there's people who are just, you know, in generally enthusiastic and supportive, and, you know, we're you know doing this together so it's not just you know me in front of the screen it's you two and everyone who's tuning in and everyone who's on the stage so um and yeah thanks thanks to all my other sort of fellow speakers and, and you sir okay thank you thank you felix i've never seen anybody who's working in blockchain who's complaining about their job so that's the positive thing i think we are all super hyped in what we do you know we love so much what we do in fact nobody's sleeping everybody is watching another podcast while they go in the gym. This is kind of my feeling. So this is amazing. But to all you people out there who you know want to know more, who want to do more, who want to go more into DeFi, just sit, sit down, take some time. Don't be scared. It's just a couple of YouTube videos away that you can be part of it. And there is so much opportunity. It's really much more about the passion. And everybody who really wants to dig in can become a user, can become an investor, or can become somebody who's working in the blockchain industry. 
and you know especially in sometimes hard uh, times around the world you know there's a lot of growth in that area so take some time dig into it thank you everyone for being here thank you alex maybe you want to add something Yep, I think uh, crypto community right now is conquering mainstream and we're seeing almost like a whole new continent being discovered or like a first plane flight and the fact that we are openly talking about our cool projects right now with all of this uh, huge community following is just amazing and I wanted to say huge thanks for the support and for the excitement that you always give us. Thank you, Alex. You are jumping to the right place. I am personally creating this decentralized world, decentralized media, decentralized television, each and every way coming out to the scene, talking with the people, bringing them together. I'm really happy to see all of you. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for your knowledge and into the sharing to our community. We have to jump on another uh, speaker. He's already with us, but I want to say you goodbye and see you very soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Sergey.